So how is a heart failure diagnosed? So first of all, you, you take a good medical history. And what is a good medical history? First of all, you want to look, I ask for questions about risk factors. Are they a diabetic? Do they have high blood pressure? Any drug history? To kind of clue you in, what's your, how high is your suspicion for this patient having heart failure? And then you do an exam, a physical exam. A lot of times, if many of you know someone with heart failure, we always look at the neck. And why are we doing that? So we have what's called the vein here, the internal jugular vein, which is like a dipstick that drains right into the heart. So you can imagine if a patient has backup of fluid, it's gonna, this, it's gonna become very prominent, and that's what we're gonna see on our exam. You can also have uh, swelling of the feet as well too, or the abdomen, and that's what you're seeing here, normal, and you can see swelling of this leg here. There's certain labs that we do as well too, we do a CBC or a blood count. We want to see what the hemoglobin is because if you have a high hemoglobin, that could lead to heart failure. A chemistry panel is going to look at your kidney function because that might be affected by heart failure. We do a BNP, which is a blood test that's elevated when you have a lot of congestion, so it helps clue in whether this patient's likely to have heart failure or not. A TSH, which is the thyroid test. HIV, iron studies, a patient has iron overload. Uh, too much iron in the body, that can lead to uh, heart failure as well, too. And then there's some testing for specific populations. Uh, iron, we talked about sleep studies, sleep <laughs> apnea, which is increasing, is a very common cause for heart failure and can be potentially treated if you uh, have a patient on uh, CPAP or certain therapy for sleep apnea. There's certain proteins that deposit in the heart. There's certain testing we can do for that as well, too. And then there's some heart failures that's genetic, so there can be genetic screen can be done as well, too. What is BNP? So BNP is actually a blood test that when the heart is stretched or um, congested, it, it will go up. So you could have a patient that, so the, 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 the troubling is when your patient comes, let's say, to emergency room, and you're trying to, patient's shortness of breath, you're trying to figure, is it from the heart or is it from the lungs? And sometimes you can use a BNP as a blood test to see if it's from the heart versus the lungs. So that kind of differentiate between the two. What does it stand for, BNP? So it's natriuretic peptide, basic natriuretic peptide, yeah. So EKG as well, too, uh, can be a clue in that there's something wrong with the heart. Uh, so that could be a first sign as well, too. Chest X-ray. So this is, uh, here's your lungs basically here, and this is the heart silhouette here. You can see the lungs are clear, they're aerated. This is a patient with heart failure. So I don't know if you can appreciate here, but if you look at the size here versus here, this heart is very enlarged, and you can see the lungs. This is all filled with fluid. That's why it's, it doesn't has that appearance of kind of the whitest appearance, which is, this is all air, and this is all filled with fluid. And really, the gold standard is uh, an echocardiogram. This is an ultrasound. And if you remember the uh, anatomy pictures, we talked about you have the pumping chambers and you have the filling chambers. So we'll just focus on the pumping chambers here. This is the left side. This is the right side. You can appreciate here that this, this left side here is nicely coming in. It's pumping nice and normal. And here's a patient with heart failure. This is what's called systolic heart failure. You can see the chamber here is quite enlarged compared to here, and you can see the function, the amount of, that it's coming in is reduced. So this patient has systolic heart failure. So the echo is really the gold standard. It can tell us a lot of information. It can tell us the pumping ability of the heart, and also can, you can see the valves here. We talked about those doors that separate the different chambers. You can also see if there's any leakage of this valve as well, too. So, so the echo is a, is a key uh, indicator for diagnosing heart failure. It'll tell you what's called an ejection fraction, which is the amount of blood that's pumped out of your heart with each heartbeat. It's important to evaluate cardiac function. It also reflects the strength of the ventricular contraction or the, the left ventricle contracting. Sometimes imaging is done as well, too, for certain conditions. We said heart failure, there's many different causes. Some causes are due to a protein deposit, and you can do a cardiac MRI to look for that, and also nuclear imaging as well, too. And and some type of workup for looking for blockage of the heart has to be done, because we talked that's the most common cause. So many times patients will undergo a catheterization where we actually inject dye to look at the blood vessels and making sure there's no abnormalities. Because theoretically, if there's any abnormalities, if you're able to restore the blood flow, now you have more nutrients to the heart muscle, and the heart muscle can actually improve. So this is a reversible cause, potentially, of heart failure.